Hey, what's up guys? As Bitcoin increases in price, more and more former Bitcoin haters turn on Bitcoin side. In this video, we'll take a look how the state of euphoria may drive Bitcoin above six-figure level, then Kevin O'Leary will explain why he is now a Bitcoin believer and what might happen to Bitcoin when it reaches $1 million. This video is presented by BlockFi. BlockFi provides financial products for crypto investors such as high-yield interest accounts, USD loans and no fees trading. With BlockFi you can get up to 8.6% APY. It works with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin or stablecoins. Do you need cash? Now you do not have to sell your crypto and pay high taxes. With BlockFi you can use your crypto as a collateral to get a cash loan. Now, BlockFi utilizes ACH that will enable users to connect their bank accounts with BlockFi and deposit slash withdraw funds into slash from BlockFi with no fees. Also, just recently Visa partnered with BlockFi to release a new credit card where users will receive 1.5% back with Bitcoin. Right now, you can earn up to $250 of crypto bonus when you open a new account and sign up with the link blockfi.com slash aimstone in the description box below. So, what are you waiting for? Sign up today! Bitcoin continues to recover from that recent dip. As of the time of this recording, Bitcoin is over $50,000. Fun fact, the price is never the same when I record the video and when I upload it. I usually record the video 5 hours before I upload it, just keep that in mind. Bitcoin's market cap is still under $1 trillion. The single BTC has to be about $53,000 to see that $1 trillion market cap once again. But the good thing is, Bitcoin built some positive momentum in these recent days and it is positive on the week. Ethereum right now is under $1,600. We still have a long way to go to reach that $2,000 once again, but it might happen faster than you think. Cardano ADA is at $1.25. Cardano and Binance coin are moving head to head. One may flip another in any given moment, considering the crypto volatility and the delta between market caps. Now, let's take a closer look at the Bitcoin price action. As I mentioned earlier, Bitcoin is about $50,000 per coin. Just 3 days ago on Sunday, Bitcoin went down as low as $43,000. It's nice to see that $7,000 bounced to the current price. Also, Bitcoin formed this nice fitted support and resistant lines. It is possible that BTC can go a bit lower and touch that support line, but it's also possible for Bitcoin to build that positive momentum and hit that resistance line. Resistance would be at about $60,000. It also depends on the time, since the Bitcoin movement is dynamic. Just recently, we had some interaction between Mark Cuban and Peter Chief on Twitter. This is what Mark Cuban said. Let me help Peter. Gold is hype as much as crypto. Do we really need a gold jewelry? Gold can make you a ring. Bitcoin and Ethereum can make you a banker, allowing friction-free exchange of value. Peter Chief replied, Congratulations to those who bought Bitcoin early, pumped up the price and who have been dumping into the hype. You succeeded in getting Wall Street to buy into the mania. When I first learned about Bitcoin, I did not think smart investors would be dumb enough to buy. I was wrong. Is Peter Chief finally admits that he has been wrong for the past decade? Well, I don't know. Let me know what do you guys think in the comment section below. What I would disagree about the statement that Peter Chief made that he said that congratulations to those people who have been dumping Bitcoin in the hype. I remember when Tesla announced the Bitcoin purchase and Bitcoin went from $40,000 till $44,000 and Peter Chief tweeted, I imagine how many people are dumping Bitcoin into this hype news. Well, guess what, Peter? Smart investors are not dumping shit. Look at where the price is at today. Here is the funny meme. Oh my god, you finally gave them the sound money. How's it going? God says, well, some idiots think it's a waste of energy. <laughs> That's funny. Here is a very interesting chart. This chart represents a long-term holder net unrealized profit slash loss in this rainbow line. This metric is very useful to track investor sentiment over the time for Bitcoin price. It is divided by few level of market sentiment. Red, capitulation. Usually at this time you hear stories such as Bitcoin is dead. Then we have fear, which is still negative sentiment towards Bitcoin. By the way, in those two stages, this is the best time to buy Bitcoin. 
Then we have optimism, where some investors become more optimistic than belief. This is when more and more investors become optimistic with these strong convictions. And finally, we have the latest stage of them all in this market sentiment, that is euphoria. That name speaks for itself, investors get high in the high prices. So right now, according to this chart, we are in euphoria stage. This is when you want to be very careful and do not be a victim of euphoric mindset. However, let's take a look how Bitcoin performed in the past during the euphoria stage. Euphoria stage happens when the long-term holder not unrealized profit slash loss is in between 0.75 and 1. Currently, this metric is at 0.8. In the first cycle, when this metric was at 0.8, BTC was at around $100 per coin. By the time this metric in the euphoria stage reached 0.9, BTC price went all the way till $1,000 and that would be 10x. In the second cycle in 2017 bull market run, when this metrics was at 0.8, the BTC price was at around $4,000. By the time this metric rose till 0.9, BTC price increased till all the way $20,000, and that would be 5x. In the first cycle, BTC made 10x when the metric increased from 0.8 till 0.9 and the second cycle, BTC increased by 5x when the metric increased from 0.8 till 0.9. If in this cycle, Bitcoin can generate in between 3 to 5x when this metric spikes above 0.9, then Bitcoin price would top it between $150,000 and $250,000. Well, we will find out soon what happens. Now, we know that Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary recently allocated 3% of his portfolio into Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let's take a look why he did that and what he thinks about Bitcoin price. You were not a fan of Bitcoin. You, you know, you had called it a nothing burger, a garbage investment. So I called Nancy, your director of public relations, and I said, is this fake news? And she said, no, it's, it's true. So. I was like, I need to get Kevin on and know, you know, why the change of heart? So when facts change, I change. And the reason that I had never participated in crypto was that I'm in a highly regulated business. I have many investments, including my chairmanship of O shares. As you know, we issue under securities laws and so many other investments I have in FinTech. And I don't play in places where the regulator hasn't decided what they're going to do. And what changed my mind, and I was very specific on it, was I'm in the ETF business. And when I saw that the Canadian regulator and the Swiss regulator and many other regulators that this has happened just in the last 60 days have opened up to allow a ETF that holds one asset, Bitcoin. Now that's a game changer. There's no question about it. That allows institutions and individuals alike to allocate. And that's number one on the hit parade that really moved me because I have actually owned crypto since uh, 2017, um, Ethereum and Bitcoin, but not really been able to speak about it because regulators really frowned on it. And as you're well aware, this is a very controversial issue. Then of course, in the last 30 days, we've started to see S&P 500 companies, including Tesla and others, start to allocate onto their FX tables. Let me explain what that means. I own an allocation of other currencies. So US, Canadian, Swiss franc, Euro, British pound. And I do that for a reason. I want diversity in the actual fiat currency I own. And also at any one time, one currency is doing better vis-a-vis -vis the other. The concern I have right now in the US market is a $1.9 trillion, basically free money helicopter out of the sky into the economy. Many people are worried about that. You've seen the 10 year go from basically 90 basis points to 1.4 in a very short period of time. How do I hedge myself against that? Now, I can obviously move into more Swiss franc, which has been a rock star stable currency. But at the same time, if the regulator is now opening up to allow me to allocate to crypto, why not? And that's why I did it. And so, look, I have taken a, well, it's been very interesting two days. It, many, many, many interviews like this. But as I say, I'm a pragmatic investor. I think a 3% allocation for me is reasonable. And then the whole host of questions have to be answered in terms of how do I do that? What do you make of Wall Street's embracement, slow embracement of Bitcoin? Michael Saylor starting the trend here. Uh, obviously, we saw Elon Musk with Tesla. Who, who do you think could be next? You're seeing the banks discuss this 
all the, all the money center banks. Why? Because their clients want it. It's not so much at this point a currency. It's not easy to actually do transactions with it. What it looks like to me right now is it's more of property. It's like buying real estate. You either believe in it or you don't. If you think about the decision tree and how I'm a good okay. example of that. Okay, I decide I want to own Bitcoin. That's decision number one. Then the decision number two is what percentage of the portfolio should it be? I would suggest one to five. I'm going in sort of right almost in the middle at 3%. And then how do I maintain that 3%? How can I mine coin sustainably? And I know for sure it's not blood coin. That's the pro what I'm working with now. And I need, you know, 3% in, in my portfolio yeah. is a material amount of money. And so I have to go find these coin, these coins and, and know with certainty uh, that as I maintain it, as the portfolio grows in value, I have to mine coin sustainably and um, no blood coin. And so, and by the way, when I talk to the institutions that I, I work for now, when I'm indexing OGIG or OUSA, they're having the same dialogues at board level, at sustainability committee levels. They're all having the same discussion. More and more and more, as you're obviously reporting, people are starting to say, I'm gonna to allocate to this as a hedge against inflation, as a store of value, in some cases as a currency. I find it way too volatile to be a currency. However, I am going to go, go to 3%. Kevin, last point, you're uh, joining us from the set of uh, Shark Tank down in Miami. Um, has Mark Cuban or Damon or any of your fellow sharks given you a hard time over your change of heart? You know, half of <laughs> us half of us are believers in Bitcoin. Uh, Mark's come out and said that he will accept it as payment for MAV tickets, for example. And there's all kinds of other, uh, you know, the sharks are looking at it. We're pragmatic investors. I, I, you know, for me, it's about allocating. I'm an indexer, so I allocate. I say, I, if I believe in something, I'm going to buy it to a certain percentage and hold my hold my holdings there. My sense is that Bitcoin is either going to perform uh, very, very well over the next two years, or it will be um, you know, tested by regulators. But I, I really see at this point, as regulators are opening up in countries like Canada and Switzerland, that the trend is for opening up to this asset class. But it's like you said, either you believe in it or you don't. You have to make that decision. It's binary, yes or no. That's the decision you have to make. And I've made the yes decision and I've taken lots and lots and lots of flack. You are not the only person that's pointed out what I've said in the past. Unfortunately, in a digital world, every comment I've ever made is already <laughs> out there. There's a footprint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, you're, you're owning it, you know, um, so I, res I respect that. And I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, so talk of 100,000 Bitcoin to you doesn't sound so crazy anymore? No. I mean, you, will it go to 20,000 first? Will it go to 5,000 first? Yeah. I have no idea. I've done a lot of work sort of looking at the, the, the philosophy of why you would do this with a portion of your fiat currency. And you really have to get past the idea that it's just a hype or a promotion. The mathematics involved here, the whole idea of mining the coin, the difference between this and proof of state, all of these things that are you know, Ethereum versus Bitcoin, which I also own some of. The other area of interest to me is I've started to, I formed a team in my organization to look at this. Um, I'm interested in, in, in actually interest yield using DAI, using USA, you know, against a Bitcoin loan. There's all kinds of different strategies, um, but the core of holding is going to be, I look at Bitcoin and say to myself, that is going to be the US dollar of cryptos. It has established itself all around the world. It's the largest market cap, it's, it's just under a trillion dollars. It'll always be the leader in my view. It'll take another hundred years to mine the last coin long past when I'm gonna be around. And so during that period, I think it will have tremendous volatility. And at the point and when, let me give you an example. If it, if it became, let's say 20 trillion of, of value, okay? Which you, you would be basically very, very stable in my view, because you would be being held by people and institutions that are holding it for again, you know, a hedge against inflation or just storage of value. We're a long way from that. I anticipate it's gonna be rock and roll, but I've, I've come to peace with the volatility. I can deal with it now. A 3% weighting is not aggressive um, and yet it will capture upside should it, should it work. Welcome on the board, Kevin. $100,000 does not seem that crazy anymore. I know that Kevin is a huge proponent of diversification, but why in the world would you diversify among fiat currencies? Fiat currency is the race to the bottom, one worse than another. I do not understand those people who hold millions in fiat. 
you only need fiat currency to sustain your business operation in the short term. If you do not have a business, you only need fiat to buy food and pay your life expenses. That's it. Overall, I like what he said. He also believes that when Bitcoin reaches $20 trillion, the volatility will drastically decline. Well, $20 trillion, that would be a $1 million per BTC. Let me know what you guys think about Kevin O'Leary allocating 3% to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.